the LA Kings, they were pretty solid last year. Uh, surprisingly, surprisingly good. I, I just they're they're such a weirdly uninteresting team. Um, even though they have they have some interesting guys, but in in fantasy, I've I've noticed that. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of top end talent on this team uh, in fantasy. You've got Adrian Kempe and uh, Kevin Fiala, I guess, but even Quentin Byfield, like I, I see him taking a step and, uh, I still don't think that the fantasy relevance is necessarily going, uh, going to be there. Like he's still, you're still going to be picking him probably after pick a hundred. Um, but, uh, last year they were third in the Pacific, uh, they were fourth in Corsi four percentage, fifth in expected goals four percentage, and sixth in scoring chances four percentage. Um, their five v five save percentage was tenth in the league at nine ten. Uh, Cam Talbot had a really good stretch, uh, as did Dave Riddick. It's kind of crazy that that their save percentage was that good, but that probably bodes well for their goalies this year. But I will get into that soon. Their shooting percentage was twenty seventh in the league at eight point four three percent. So they were not converting on these the this great shot and chance generation that they had. Um, their power play percentage, they were tied for 11th in the league at 22.6% conversion. Uh, so really good, really good underlying stats all uh, across the board outside of the conversion at 5v5. Uh, but I think that that, that could probably, uh, that could probably improve this year. Uh, in terms of key departures, Victor Arvidsson out the door, as I just mentioned, he went to Edmonton, Cam Talbot went to Detroit, Matt Roy signed in Washington, and Pierre-Luc Dubois also went to Washington in a trade for Darcy Kemper, who's one of the key additions here. Uh, Warren Fogel comes over in free agency. Tanner Janot comes over from Tampa. And Joel Edmondson comes over from the Leafs. Um, Darcy Kemper, I think, is an interesting add there. I, I think he uh, has something left in the tank. I think he had a rough year last year, struggled with injury. Um, but I do think that with... Uh, with the environment in front of him, as we've seen, uh, Dave Riddick and and Cam Talbot uh, ended up with with the tenth ranked team save percentage at, at even strength in the league. So I think Darcy Kemper uh, is probably probably going to be okay here in LA. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that brings us right over to to the goaltending situation. Uh, they've got three guys here. They did bring Phoenix Copley back, which is interesting. He really struggled last year. He uh, had only eight starts uh, with an eight sixty eight even strength save percentage. Uh, they had to go to Dave Riddick at a certain point. Uh, he had twenty two starts with a nine twenty seven even strength save percentage. He was exceptional. And then Darcy Kemper uh, had 30 starts in Washington last year with an 897 even strength save percentage. As I mentioned, he really struggled. But I, I'm i excited about Darcy Kemper. I think he's probably going to be a volume starter here. Um, and I, I think that, uh, like I said, with the defensive environment in front of him, I could see him performing pretty well. And he's going a little bit later in drafts. Uh, he's one of the lower volume starters uh, in terms of ADP. So that's a guy that I'm definitely considering taking uh in the mid to late rounds um in terms of schedule quirks uh they are they have 14 back-to-backs that's tied for fifth in the league 31 off nights that's tied for 11th um their weeks 22 to 24 playoff schedule they've got 11 games with three off nights which is pretty solid uh not a ton of off nights but uh they uh they have uh the most amount of games in the league uh, tied with a few other teams. Uh, and then from weeks 23 to 25, they have 12 games with three off nights, which is, which is a decent playoff schedule as well. Um, their power play projection. I've got them uh, rolling out the same power play as they did last year. Obviously they, they played pretty well uh, and converted very nicely. I've got Kopitar Kempe, uh, Kevin Fiala, Quinton Byfield and Drew Doughty. We've got Brant Clark waiting in the wings. I think that he is going to succeed Doughty at some point, but I don't think that uh, I don't think it's time yet. Uh, so I do think Doughty gets gets the power play quarterback role at least to start the season next year. Um, in terms of my forward projections, we've got Anze Kopitar. 
uh, for 20 goals, 48 assists, and 68 points. Adrian Kempe, I've got him for 35 goals, 36 assists, 71 points, 263 shots, and 118 hits. Quinton Byfield, I've got him for 23 goals, 40 assists, 63 points. Trevor Moore, 26 goals, 31 assists, and 57 points. Uh, Kevin Fiala, I've got him for 29 goals, 49 assists, 78 points. And Philip Deneau, 17 goals, 33 assists, and 50 points. So um, I'm pretty... I mean, yeah, pretty uninterested in in, in LA Kings uh, outside of maybe Kevin Fiala and Adrian Kempe. Um, Andre Kopitar, I think you're probably going to get a, him at value. Um, he's he's getting pushed way down in drafts. In Yahoo drafts, he's actually going at 164. So I'm okay taking Kopitar in that range, but he is definitely seeing some decline 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 in terms of his his play driving and and his offensive numbers. Um, Quinton Byfield, I think, will take a step this year, but he is playing a new position. He's playing at center. Um, so uh, there could be some growing pains there, but I do still think he's going to get some really nice deployment and may even uh, may even end up centering the top line with, with Kempe uh, over Kopitar. Uh, at some point this year with Kopitar kind of kind of declining a little bit so so that'll be interesting to watch for sure but yeah a lot of uh, uh I don't know a lot of meh on this team in terms of uh, in terms of their forward numbers uh and in terms of my defense projections I've got Drew Doughty for nine goals 42 assists and 51 points along with 109 hits and 126 blocks Brant Clark I've got him for 14 goals 23 assists and 31 points um sorry 37 points uh I've been getting screwed on this stupid font I need to change this font on 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 these slides uh I've been I've been sewering Gugsy and uh I'm fooling myself here but yeah Brant Clark I do think that this guy is going to play a bigger role this year uh with Matt Roy out the door I I think that he's probably going to be a second pair of defenseman on this team this year uh I think he'll play f- full time and I think that he is good enough to generate a decent amount of offense even without power play time so uh I think he is he's their top offensive defenseman of the future but for now I think Drew Doughty is going to is going to carry some weight uh on at least on the power play uh, and then my top three targets on this team, I've got Kevin Fiala. Uh, his ADP right now is on Yahoo. It's 87.1 for a guy that's, uh, that I, I have projected to almost hit 80 points. That's, that's a pretty nice spot for him in Alps and Geno's leagues. He's at 54.6. So that seems a little bit more, uh, more, uh, more correct. I think for Kevin Fiala, um, Quinton Byfield, uh, I've, He's he's another target for me, uh, and it's mostly because he's going at 153.7 in Yahoo leagues, and in Apple's and Geno's leagues, 179. Uh, I'm pretty okay with that. Uh, I think there is some upside uh, here further than this these 63 points for Quentin Byfield. I think he could take a significant step this year and and kind of bring up some of these underlying numbers. So I'm I'm excited to watch him. And then Brant Clark is not being drafted in Yahoo leagues right now. Um, and that's a guy that I think you could put at the, at the bottom end of, of your roster and be pretty happy with that. And, and he could potentially, could potentially break out this year. Uh, I have him as, as a sleeper. So, uh, yeah, I, those are my targets for the LA Kings.